The two-lane highway rushes up and down, a white line down its middle leading it on. It curves the way the stream beside it curves, carved out by glaciers in a time when the world was ice. Past time is with you always, always here. It's held in gorge and meadow, in gray-green moss, in lichens, in boulder spill from old stone walls. So turn at the wayside onto an unmarked road that leads a mile uphill, then dwindles to a grassy path through August woods, dim as a church and cool. A fallen birch will block your path. You'll hear him saying clearly, you who imagine such things, you can't go farther, can't go in my woods. Ignore the warning and press on to find his cabin in a clearing, its door locked to the world. With the right key, the door will open to you, you who are neither first nor last to come here. Why have you come? To crank the old black phone in the kitchen, hoping a voice at the end of the line might answer. To idly turn the pencil sharpener, the kind he used in the schoolroom when he was master, its silver blade sharpening the point of all he said. Here in the bare front room, a lap board on his lap, he wrote about the weather outside and in his head. Nothing betrays him except, half hidden on the mantel, a chipped toy goblet, rose red when the light shines on it. Something a child might play with, a child long gone. Now take down the book of letters from the shelf that opens on its own to his words after a daughter's death. We thought to move heaven and earth, heaven with prayers and earth with money. We moved nothing, and here we are, Cadmus and Harmonia, not yet placed safely in changed forms. Somewhere beyond these rooms, these trees, this path, he's laughing his dark laugh, changed the way the wood in the woodpile changes, softening over years so slowly the eye can't see, unless the eye has all eternity. When you leave, leave all as it was, the black phone on hook, the heavy book back on the shelf, for the next one who comes as curiously as you did. Outside, linger for a moment. Sit on the old stone slab he raised up off the ground and made into a bench, the kind that letter might mark a grave. Stare at the mountain that was his constant companion. It looks at you without emotion. It does not rage or love as he did, and yet its permanence consoles. The wind is picking up moving the trees to softly whisper, shh, a spider on your shoe is listening to all you say. And um, I guess I'll just say one thing about the end. The poem's got lots of little allusions to frost images and frost poems, but he's got this really wonderful sonnet called Design, and there's a white spider in it. And so when I, when I was visiting the cabin and then came out, I don't know, I just this spider out there made me think about, again, like so many of the things in the cabin and outside the cabin made me think of certain poems of his. <laughs>